All right. Hello, everybody. So great to be part of Pride. So great to uh, celebrate Pride. I'm so excited to be invited um, to one of our first online presentations through an, a, what would usually be uh, an in-person online event. Thank you to Andrew Rosser for having me here. Thank you to my interpreter, Jennifer, for joining us today. Now, my name is Melissa Millett. I'm the owner of In Dogs We Trust, the owner trainer for the Ultimates. Uh, the In Dogs We Trust is an online, or sorry, it's an in-person dog training facility where we cover everything from puppy training, behavior modification, trick training, and recently Hollywood animal actors. Now I'm also the head trainer for the Ultimates. We do a lot of we do a lot of in-person events with uh, trick dogs, trick cats, and all sorts of fun events. Um, and while we are missing you guys this year, we are certainly excited to be part of online. Now we also have a new program that I'm launching as well called the Hollywood Animal Actors Show, and we're representing animal actors through the Ontario Animal Actors website. So that's really neat. We're going to talk about some things today. I'm going to talk about family pet training. Uh, what you can do at home, some tips and tricks for you to have an amazing family pet. We're also going to talk about how to have a really talented animal actor. If you do have an animal actor, if you want your dog to be famous, um, we have programs for that. And of course, what is an online festival without tricks? Lots of fun tricks to see. We have a few trick dogs standing by. We're in our own facility. This is where we train the movie animals here. We have all of our props ready to go, um, located in this beautiful country spot. Now first, I wanna start with our family pets. I wanna talk about giving you some tips on how you can have an amazing trained dog. Now, dog training is about two things, emotions and consequences. Uh, so what motivates behavior? The way they feel um, and reinforcement for the behavior. So let me give you my first example. If you want to teach, this is a common behavior, loose leash walking. Loose leash walking is about teaching what you'd like instead, teaching the dog where to be. It's also about addressing the animal's emotional state. So we want to teach the dog how to be calm, relax, and um, have impulse control. So um, we're going to talk about also emotions and consequences in terms of people coming over. So when people come over, it's also about uh, teaching your dog how to relax and have impulse control. So we're going to bring out one of our friends, Pickles, and Pickles is going to showcase our first behavior for impulse control. Come on out here, Pickles. All right, first up, I wanna teach you a game. This is called the It's Your Choice Game. The It's Your Choice Game teaches you how to teach your dog to wait for something that is exciting. So you're gonna, if you wanna practice along with me at home, you can grab your dog. I want you to grab some really delicious treats and uh, we're gonna show you our very first game. Pickles, you sound excited. Come on over here, Pickles. Pickles is a Boston Terrier. She is, uh, Five, no, she's six years old. Pickles has had an amazing career. She was actually, there we are. Pickles was actually on Good Morning America when she was one and a half years old. Pickles was on Family Channel at four months and Pickles was on Super Bowl commercial teaser this year. All right, here's what we're gonna do. Pickles is demonstrating impulse control for you. Right, girl? Okay, so first things first, teaching the dog, that was naughty, perfect how to back up and wait for something that they want, not to try to always take it. So you're gonna take all these treats in your hand and you're gonna close your hand and you're going to anchor your elbow to your knee. The dog's going to do that for probably a lot longer than pickles. You open your hand when she backs off and she tries to take again, you close your hand. But pickles, you're too perfect. You're not much of an example for naughty. So when pickles backs off, we deliver the pizza. So what this looks like for you at home, your dog is all over your hand, just don't reinforce that. Wait it out. You're gonna be waiting it out for about a full minute, maybe two. Every time your dog stops and backs off, your hand opens, the dog goes for it, your hand closed, backs off, your hand opens. 
That way your dog learns that if they stay out of your personal space, they get a reinforcer. Once you've taught this first awesome behavior for impulse control, we're gonna move to teaching a dog to stay on a mat. And that's your next impulse control behavior. Um, the mats are, yeah, up high. So mat training is great for multiple things. Having your dog met weight on a mat before they say hello to somebody when somebody comes over. Pickles, come on, babe. <laughs> so we teach the, <laughs> you're too cute. Well, we teach the dog to lay down on a mat before somebody comes into your home and it teaches them to relax and calm down. So what should we utilize mat training for? Number one, Pickles, stay with us, girl. Good. Number one. How do we teach somebody to, to relax? Number one, I want you to teach the behaviors in a series of progressive steps. We're gonna teach your dog to lie down on a mat. We're gonna do that in a second. Once your dog knows how to lie down on a mat, you're gonna add duration, and then you're gonna to start to practice what that looks like in your own home. You're gonna put your dog on the mat, open and close the door, and uh, recreate a guest coming over. So you need to have all of these fundamentals covered. Pickles, thank you. All of these fundamentals covered in terms of your training before a person ever comes over. Then you're going to be ready for somebody coming over. Once you've done your fundamentals, your dog goes in another room, your guest is invited in. Now you're, sorry, backtrack. Your guest texts you before they even show up. So your dog's in another room. You, uh, you allow the guest in, you see the guests so that they're very non, they're very not exciting, not very exciting at all. They're seated on the couch. You're gonna go into your bedroom, take your dog out of your bedroom or their crate. You're gonna relax them on a mat before they come out. And then you're gonna relax them on a mat at a distance from your guests so they're not too excited. They could be set up for success. And then we move them progressively closer. Now, what I like to do is I like to ask people to actually ignore my dog for the first 10 minutes um Ella, there are special people though that are special to pickles right hi jj Hello. pickles is very excited about jj she's allowed to say hi those people are not allowed to say hi right away um, having your dog ignore your guests for the first 10 minutes really causes them to calm down and relax Great. all right let's practice on your bed are you ready okay so we, this exercise is called creating value for, for the mat so i want you to get your dog down on that and i really want you to hammer in the tree yes Reach, and they get nothing. And when you when you create value for the mat, you're teaching the dog to contrast. Lots of treats happen here. Treats do not happen here. So the dog goes back on the mat. Yes. 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 Reach. So I want you to take a moment and really pause to teach your dog that nothing happens off the mat. And I want your dog to look confused and wish that the trees were still flowing. Yes. 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 Freak. Now, this brings us to our next point. You should always release the dog, have a release cue. I like to use the word break that lets the dog know when the treats stop flowing and when the behavior is finished. Once you have this mastered, now you're going to stretch the duration between the treats. Yeah. If you do it properly, your dog should drive back to the mat as if the mat is a, a magnet. We look at it like a magnet. So um, let me recap some of that for you at home. Now, Pickles is going on her mat on her own, um, but if not, you're going to lure her into a fit and she's down. And there's multiple things actually that really make a difference in dog training. And that's why it's always great to take a class because the diff details between good and great are always minor details. So here are some details that really matter for something like relaxing on a mat and teaching a dog to relax on a mat is one of my most important behaviors because you can take the mat to places that are exciting. One, you're gonna bookend the behavior. There's always a start and a finish. Two, you're gonna feed for position. So when I reinforce the dog on the mat, I reinforce between the front legs on the ground, not 
in their mouth from my hand because then they come up to you. The trees come from you, they're gonna come to you. If the trees appear on the ground, they're gonna stay on the mat to get to the trees. So those are two different, you know, a couple different things that you can do. Um, you definitely want to release and always add an end to the behavior. And so those are a couple of little secret tricks that we have. First, even before the mat, now I want you to take a second and think about the exercise that we did prior, the It's Your Choice game, where we taught the dog to wait for the treats to come to them, not to come to me for the treats. And think about the effect that the It's Your Choice game is having on Pickles waiting patiently for the treats to come to her. So those are two excellent impulse control games that you can train at home, one after the other. And you can see how much fun exactly that dog has. Pickles, you look really sad when you're working. <laughs> yeah. Good, you can see just how much fun dogs have when performing those activities. So those are your starting points for family pet training, but what if you want something more? Well, we have a lot of programs at and Dogs We Trust, and one of our most popular programs that's new is uh, the Hollywood Animal Actors Program. So um, this year, actually two years ago, I was discovered into the movie industry, and we did some really cool projects the biggest was actually the biggest was definitely Pet Cemetery. Uh, we have to say hello to Melissa here. Hi, Melissa. Hello. What's your, can you tell everybody what your job on Pet Cemetery was? Professional cat dirtier. Yeah, Melissa was one yes. of the one of the groomers, the coloration artist. Yeah. Professional cat dirtiers. Uh, she works with me. She works uh, at the Foxy Hound Grooming Salon, and what she does is she colors the animals before they have to match, right? So the cats had to get makeup. We had to color match them all. There was five cats that played church. Our next biggest project was actually teach, it was, was training the crypto dogs on Titans. Now these dogs are, they're all, all three were local dogs from London. This is a Warner Brothers TV series on Netflix. And we actually had to source the dogs from a very specific look and we took people's pet dogs and we trained them to uh, perform the movie behaviors. So they would learn to, they did some really neat things. They, they learned to work downtown Toronto, walk beside the actor, lots of stay, focus. We had some more complex things like crawl, uh, crawl as if incapacitated, lie down and I think the coolest was the stunt dog work that we did with, with Digby. Shout out to Shannon and Digby. We got Digby. We have uh, Wrigley owned by Lindsay. And we had Lacey with the other Titans dog. Now Digby was our stunt dog. And he performed a really cool action where um, he, he actually jumped into a stunt man's arms and took him down. So other cool things that we ended up getting to do was Christmas Chronicles. Uh, which meant actually there was a, a client from In Dogs We Trust that came to the set with me and we were standing on the set and Melissa, I guess he walked up to us. Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell walked up to us and we were like, uh, was that Kurt Russell? Yeah, we got to hang out with Kurt Russell and Goldie Hawn. So these opportunities are available um, for select dogs. Your dog has to be extremely confident. You have to put a significant amount of work into training this dog um, and you can do that through our Hollywood program. So we're gonna showcase some really cool Hollywood behaviors with a dog named Snickers. If you wanna grab Snickers for me. And Snickers, it's about to get turned into a party in here. Snickers is a really busy dog. Um, we're gonna showcase first, what is a common movie behavior? Common movie behavior is actually teaching your dog to go to a mark. Now mark is, is where the, just so the dog knows where to be when he's working on a set. Now, when we perform the Hollywood Animal Actors class, Snickers, come buddy, Snickers, come here bud. The Hollywood Animal Actors class, we actually have a series of cool behaviors. What I'm gonna do with Snickers is I'm gonna showcase you some cool behaviors um, that are small and easy and some complex <laughs> movie behaviors. So remember, we were just talking about the impulse control. Now Snickers is two years old. He's just starting out in his career. So first thing we're gonna do with Snickers is we're gonna lay him down and relax him because we need him to be 
need him to be in a focused place. Um, you can turn the camera around now. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So that gets relaxing. We're going to turn the camera around so that you can get a good angle. Good. Beautiful. All right. So Snickers is two years old. He was rescued out of, out of uh, New York. Snickers, get off the mark, honey. Uh, so he's just relaxing before he works. Good boy. Now, first thing Snickers is going to do is Snickers is going to showcase going to a mark. As I say, this is a common uh, animal after movie behavior. Good boy, Snickers. Any mark, please? Thank you. Great. All right. So we're going to need to find a mark. We're going to get rid of this. So when you're training your animal after, you're going to actually start them off on a mark that is a large, obvious mark. You're going to be working down to a small mark, like a rock or something more invisible. If you watch the movies, you might see the animal standing on a rock. You might, in crypto, see the animal actually standing on um, dead stun guys <laughs> uh, to showcase uh, or to know where they're on a mark. Okay, ready? Search. Mark. Okay. Good boy. Back up. Good boy. Search. So we're going to have uh, Snickers get on and off the mark and then we're going to do this more complex stuff. Ready? Say. Good boy. Say. Nobody asks that one. Good boy. So Snickers is going to be able to need to be able to perform all the behaviors on the mark. Sit, stand, down, stand, back up, good boy. Sit, stand, back up, back up, good. All right, good job. All right, now we're going to show you some cooler behaviors today with Snickers. Now Snickers is working complex movie behaviors as well. This is going to be in the higher advance of our calling. Good boy, great. Come on over here. Snickers, now. Okay, a Snickers is showcasing some complex scenes of injury. Are you ready? Although, generally you want to match your personality with, with your actors. Snickers is a little happy still with his injuries. So I'm not sure, like, you need to work on his acting to make him look sad. All right, ready? Down, crawl. Down. Let's try that again, you cheater. Come here. Down. Stay. Good boy. Stay. Crawl. Down. Looks quite sad and injured, right? Good boy. Great. Good boy. We need to try that one more time. Down. And throw the dead. Crawl. Dead. Very sad. <laughs> Boy, great. Come on, let's showcase another one. We're going to do this today. Get one little. Good. Good boy. All right, let's go revisit with that dead. I think we can do some more fun with that dead. Ready? Down. Stay. All right, ready? Stop. Down. Stay. Stay. Good boy. Now we got to kick it out a notch. This is called the ultimate play dead. Stay. All right. We freaked some people out on Facebook yesterday. They could see. Sick. Oh. <laughs> Freak, good boy. <laughs> he probably looked like he was choking, although he was uh, hacking up the tree. All right, <laughs> Snickers, awesome job. Let's turn over a couple of times. Ready? Ready? Down. Good boy, you ready? Nice. Oh, wait, nice. Come here, buddy Snickers. Come. Snickers. Come. Come here. Come here, Snickers. Down. Good boy. Down. Ready? Sit. Good boy. Wait for it. Ready? Down. Good boy. Ready? Up. Nice. All right, we're going to try it. Now, this is a new trick for Snickers. It's not an animal actor trick, but before we say goodbye, we've got to give this one a try. Might need a couple tries, guys. This is brand new. Okay, are you ready? Come here, down. Ready, buddy? Okay, up. Stay. Sit. Chrissy. 
Go, 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 pretty. You can do it, buddy. Pretty, sit. Pretty. Sit, pretty. Great. Good boy. Good job. All right. Thank you, Snicker. Cute, cute, cute. All right, let's go back to some Hollywood animal actor stuff for a second. I'm going to revisit Miss Pickles. I just got to get my more cut up. Now, there's a couple things I like to do. I'm going to bring you in on a training session for Pickles the animal actor. All right. Now, the dogs don't always have to look at you. Sometimes they have to look at the actor and they have to do what's called a work away. So, I'm gonna go this direction. And we're gonna showcase the dog and how the dog is gonna start working, looking away from you. Hey, Pickles. Come on, sweetheart. All right, this is called a work, a work way. <laughs> this, is, this is the top one. Yes, you're a good girl. We need one more thing. This is our live training session with Pickles. Six years old, dog and terrier. And that's pretty much as cute as it gets. So she may, it's not your turn yet, sweetheart. Don't ruin the surprise. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Pickles, let's show them our stuff. Now, this is a work way. This is one of the Pickles we've been working on. Come on, say one more. Here we go. You ready? Go oh, stack it up. Stay. Here we go. Look. Great. Very nice. All right. Nicely done. Ready? Can you look? Wait. Sit. Good. Stand. Quick stand. Oh, that's a tough one. Stand. Great. Very nice. All right. Now, Melissa Heathers and I work together, so we're in the same social bubble. Can you put the camera down, Melissa, and come be my assistant? I need you to sit. I need you to sit in the chair and be my actor, please. Come on over here, Pickle. Thank you, Melissa. Okay, here we go. Now, this is what this a tough one. It's called the workway. Melissa's well, going to be my actor. I give her this plate to hold to start because it helps the dog learn to look in the direction. So if you want to look, sit down. Great, very nice. All right, one more thing, Pickle. Could you come over here a second? Could you go say thank you? Oh, I think Mark went. Could you do me a favor? Could you say thank you, Melissa? Yes. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> All right. Thank you, Melissa, for your help. Woo! I do want to show you one more trick that belongs to Pickles, though, because uh, Pickles is such a talented lady. Come on over here. These are the sneak peeks to our 2020 show uh, because we are normally touring at this time. And this year, obviously, due to COVID, we're not touring. And but we're bright, we look at the bright side. This gives us a lot of time to practice and have more tricks available. But this means that I'm gonna show you the tricks that I have, the secret tricks. While I'm showing you these tricks, we are gonna have a question and answer period about any questions that you guys have about Hollywood actors or um, any family pet training before we get on to some final dogs that are waiting to do some tricks. All right, Pickles, so you do that one part. Let's show everybody. Stop. Good girl, you wait there. Good girl. Uh, that's not waiting on your spot, dude. Okay, right over here. All right. Do you have any questions, Melissa, on there? How long are most dogs away for Hollywood for animal acting? Oh, like how long do they leave? Yeah. To okay, so I'm gonna I, I'm gonna answer a couple questions because I want to buy some time. Here's what I would like. I would like somebody who's watching to pick a number between one and six. So I want to do a live helper from the audience. So if you're watching, please comment a number between one and six, and Melissa Heathers is gonna tell me what that is in a second. 
But remind me, that question is how long are the animals away for a holly whip animal after training? Yeah. So um, during the holly whip animal after training, you train your dog. So we run it like a regular family, class, family pet class. It's a six week program where you would come with your dog every week. The dogs have to have some sort of prerequisite, um, usually basic and intermediate. And then you would do the holly whip to learn the specific behaviors. Or if you have a highly trained obedience dog and you want to learn the specific behaviors, um, Hollywood would be a great place to do that as well. Now what happened with Titans is sort of a special situation where we liked the look of the dog and it was a major feature. So what happened with those dogs is they came to me in the space nine to five, just like they go to dog daycare. It's like a board and train program and we train them throughout the day all day. And then we drove them home to you at night and then we pay you for that. So it's like you won the lottery, really. Um, then when we actually go to set, we will take your dog, if you get big enough, uh, Monday to Friday and bring them home on the weekends. But mostly we like to have the dog home with you as much as possible. But if we do uh, do a large movie, um, if, you, if it's an ongoing feature, you don't come, we take your dogs and give you a check and your dogs know us because we do the prep so that uh, what we saw in the, in the Titans dog, we saw more confidence. We saw uh, less annoying behaviors, like less hyperactivity because they were professionally trained, confidence built um, and you know, a lot, a lot of good stuff came out of it. Not just the paycheck for the owners, but a lot of good stuff. Um, but yeah, we like to get the dogs back to you as much as possible. When it comes to a TV commercial, or uh, a one day program, you can come with me, but I will work your dog for you on the set because um, people get nervous and their dogs get nervous. And since I do it all the time, I don't get nervous. So you're, but you can sit there, you can watch the whole thing and you can jump in and you can say, you know, you're gonna know everything that's gonna happen. Cause I've been working with the Humane Society for years. We have the American Humane Association watch everything we do. And it's important that everything you know so for example we did a commercial and they said i want to drop a bunch of tennis balls on the dog's head and see how the dog reacts and i said i don't know if the dog's going to react favorably to that so i'm going to say no but you can ask the owner who's in the other room and or standing in the corner and she's going to say yes or no that's up to her but i will do less things than an owner would because um it's not my dog right yeah all right could we get another question melissa it goes. We've got numbers. We got numbers. What's our first number? We'll have our first number. Four. Four. All right. Come on over here, Pedro. There. All right, Pedro. This is our first time performing a trick for anybody to watch. So I'm going to grab the number. And most of what I want you to do, so you can see how this works. See, all the numbers are right here. Melissa, where am I going to put this number? Am I going to put it right here? There, like, what number am I putting it beside? What's the second number on the list? Three. Three, okay, so I'm gonna put it right here. Can we see the numbers on the camera so that they, they know that you're getting the right one? Okay, get in. All right, here we go. Four. Uh-oh, I'm gonna get knocked out of the way. <laughs> Woo! Get it, girl! Pickles! All right, let's do that one more time. What's the next number we got? Three. Okay. And let's get all the numbers back together. Can you tell me what the number after that is so we know which one to put it beside? Two. Number two. Okay, so we'll put that on this side this time. Look at the dog's face. So this is the thing. If your dog just to train your dog for fun, just to have your dog become an animal actor. Dogs are meant to work. They were bred for 12,000 years to have a job. And this is the facial expression of a dog that gets to work. <laughs> All right. So number three, right? Yeah. Three. Oh. <laughs> yes, 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 you! Pickles is an amazing little dog. When we, when I adopted Pickles, I discovered she had two bad knees. She's 
had both of us got left leg and health surgery on both knees. And because my I make my career off of performance animals, do you think I'm going to trade her in because she's a lemon? Absolutely not. I adore this dog. I'm going to teach her new tricks to use her brain so that we don't have to work her game. I absolutely love you. That's what I love about tricks is you can actually teach tricks that go with your dog's personality. My favorite thing about tricks is that there are a million tricks you can say. Does my dog like to jump? Does he like to run? Is, is he calm? Is he a thinker? Does he like to retrieve? And you actually run in the direction um, that your dog likes and it really helps them have a job, have purpose, it decreases behavioral issues. There is no end. All right, let's check it out and see if we have any questions. If you have any other questions you want to add, because we have some eager beaver trick dogs to have a turn. So I'm going to bring out adorable little lollipop. Lollipop's going to showcase some cool behaviors. Yeah, what time are we at, Lisa? 4.32. 432. Okay, we're going to start with little Yippy Skippy then. Uh, <laughs> we're going to start with little Yippy Skippy. She's going to showcase some really cool behaviors. Uh, this dog is a rat carrier, possibly Chihuahua, and she is, <laughs> she's five years old. She's a little, she's a little yappy. I, yeah, I know. She's, she's pure Chihuahua in her personality. Super, super fun little dog. Um, this dog's obviously a jumper, so that's what the trick that we will look we go with jumping tricks. So we're going to welcome that little popcorn. If you guys have any questions about Hollywood animal lockers, the pet training, uh, I run a dog we trust all the time. Come here, Nathan. Come here. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Any of those questions, you can put them in the discussion and we will answer. We have to go into the Facebook page, into the discussion. All right. Ready? Give me, give me. She's a little confused why there's a lot of people in her place. Good. Are you ready? I know. Good job. You want to do it again? Okay, we're going to do it the whole new way. Come on, baby. Ready? 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 Good job. All right, not just jump, we've got some fire here. Good job, come on, Nancy. Woo, good job, let's go, let's go. Come on, Nancy, go. Ready, sit. Down. You ready? Go, go, go. Go. Come on, let's go, 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 go. Come on, get in there. I lost her. Ready? Pretty darn cute. Yeah. yeah. Cutest you've ever seen, though? Know? <laughs> Cutest? All right. Let's show everybody a new trick that we're working on. I want to give um, some insight into training the dog. This is something fun that we're working on. This is one of our training ropes. Now, what she needs to do is <laughs> that. <laughs> Except um, she has to wait for a release cue. We were talking about a release cue earlier. Oh, excuse yourself. Come around here. I'm too excited. Down, stay. Down. Stay. Great. Nice job. Good job. One more. Almost. Okay. Come on, give it a try. Oh, boy. She really gives it her all, eh? Now, let's go down to her overexcited. Great. 
Now let's give everybody sort of insight into what happens during show season. What actually happens during show season is the behaviors deteriorate because we're doing it in front of a crowd and we won't get corrected as much as if we don't do it properly, right? So let's take a second and let's go back to that handstand. Now what's going on in that handstand is she's driving without being straight. So during the off season, I will retrain these complete behaviors. I'm going to take this mark here. Which okay. Come in, come down. And I want her to learn to stand up on the mark in her handstand and come to me there. Because what happens is she should not been coming to me without being straight. Okay. Great. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> Just swinging her little butt up in the air. Come on, try it again. And. <laughs> no, that wasn't it, Turkey. Now, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. So I need to separate my criteria, and I need her, if you can hold on to the table, to understand the offer game handstand straight, without, and holding it straight, good girl. So I'm going to change the item that I'm using, handstand, straight, hey, that's a nice one, she has to look all the jackpot for that, okay, come on, straight, straight, good job. Great, good job. Good. Good job, right? Good. Great. I don't like all that popping and skipping. All right, now we're going to get rid of this and see if we can come back to this and we're going to get next man. Yeah! Nice job! Always a flight in your face. <laughs> Not always glamorous, this animal training. Can I get up one more? No, that's cheap. Nice. Always taking those little shortcuts. Cute little buttons being in my face. So one more. Last one, just your last behavior, okay? No, wait, let's do two. Let's do this one and one more behavior. Back it up. No, let's see how she likes the cheek. Oh, that was a good one. Woo! Good job. Yeah, good job. All right, now I want to change gears. I want to show her backing up on something. So I need a backup board. You'll notice we do a lot of things on boards around here. You're beautiful. This is what I'm talking about for dogs that love to work. They love to joy and work. Now I'm teaching her to back up and she's used to associating backing up with a handstand. So my favorite thing about this behavior is the way that she hides that to be. Yes. Yes. So this is a great way to teach back up to go on to. Yes. Whatever that is, that's like a handstand and backwards thing. Now, hip the kippy. Let's show everybody a trick they can do at home. We're going to show face roll over down. Good. Now, for at home, we're going to get them to look towards the bum. Yes. You see how she rolled over on the hip. Can we get her to look towards the bum? We angle it over the rib cage. Good job. Now, popcorn is learning her rollover down. I want her to learn this ninja roll that my friend Jason Dick does with her wiener, her wiener dog. I should. <laughs> her wiener dog down. <laughs> That's why I want a wiener dog. I want a wiener dog for all the jokes. Um, basically, what happens is she lies here and the dog ninja rolls off her body. It's amazing. It's beautiful. All right, that's all we have for the little popcorn. I just want you to enjoy her adorable cuteness. There we go. A little popcorn. <laughs> oh, she's mad at you for taking her away. Here, here's something. <laughs> she doesn't like being held by others. So we made a face at each other. She can appreciate being picked up. That's right.
I want you to take that in. Professional dog trainers do not have perfect dogs. You have nearly perfect dogs. The only perfect individual in the world is me. <laughs> Why are you laughing? I am perfect. My dogs are only almost perfect. All right, so that is our first little helper. We're gonna go um, next. We're gonna start into some cat training. Now, this is what's really interesting. I had to call my mother the other day and say, mom, I think my destiny is to be a cat trainer. Uh, a lot of things that happened with her. Cat training, everybody originally said, are you crazy? Why would you have a cat? I don't understand the point. It seems a little crazy to me. But um, from there, I ended up getting um, hired to be the key cat trainer on Pet Cemetery. I trained good cat tonic and uh, my partner trained um, evil cat Leo and we had three other kitties as well. And um, lots of great things have happened. We've launched our cat training online class. Yeah, we've been doing online cat training all over the world, Germany, um, Australia, the US, all over the US. We found really cool success. The cats have been just amazing and it was, it was actually really fun. And that's one of the good things that have come out of COVID is understanding technology and the possibility. And the possibility is possibilities because cat training it's not something you would think to do in person. So before we bring out this kitty, I want to double check in. Uh, do you want to let me know as the questions come in, if there are any questions for us, Melissa? When is a good age to start puppy classes? Oh, actually, a good age to start puppy class is around 10 weeks um, after they've experienced two weeks at home. So you, you want, the old recommendation was three vaccinations and then two vaccinations. And the American Veterinary Society of Animal Behavior um, that's the animal behaviorists that are that who specialize in animal behavior. They recommend one vaccination and two weeks home so that we can quarantine them, make sure they don't have anything, and that you can get them out during that critical socialization window. Okay, more dogs are affected by anxiety and lack of socialization, so they want to see those puppies trained and socialized early. Good. Right on. All right, I want to introduce you to our next animal. This is a Bengal leopard cat. A Bengal leopard cat is a really cool cat. Come here, sweetheart. Yes, darling. It's a hybrid cat bred with a mini Asian leopard. Um, they do retain their, their wild characteristics. <laughs> and she is ready to go. I need my love. All right, let's go through some of our behaviors. And I want to show you a live training session of this thing. Okay, come here, sister. You ready? Yeah. Great. Come on over here. Ready? Read down. Read down. Nice job. Read down. Good job. Up, up, up. Nice girl. Good job. Mm. All right, ready? Garage uh, shop, and she's not running away. That's a great trick, right? 
wide open opportunity. Okay, she is looking at the birds out there. All right, now we're learning a new trick. You see how she does a rebound on my hand. I want her to rebound on, sorry, she rebounds on my leg. Yeah, wouldn't that be cool? Right on my hand. Now I'm just showing you guys my, my feet. Guys. <laughs> Come on, ready? Yeah, good job. And then I'm going to fade down to my hand. Now, as I was practicing, I said to myself, do I want cat claws coming out my hand? Sometimes you're in the middle of a trick and you're like, yeah, maybe that's a no. Ready? Good job. So that's going to be beautiful. As, I, as I'm practicing that, I'm going to fade out neatly. I didn't fool anybody. <laughs> See if she's ready to lose the prop. Ready? Watch me when we're on a walk. Good, very good question. Focus on you when you're on a walk. I want you to think about everything as a series of progressive steps. So, how do we start by setting the dog up for success? You know, when the dog is correct, the dog enjoys working with you. I want you to think about it as speaking the same language. It's fun to communicate with somebody who makes it easy to win, who makes it easy to understand. So, how do we do that? First, you're going to start in your own home. 
and you're gonna take a treat and you can show it to the dog's nose, pull it up to your cheek, yes, and give. Then you're going to do that in increasingly distracting environments. So what we have here is a great setup for anybody that has a garage. You see, we have a big open door. So that is an intro to outside without actually being outside. So you can start in your garage. You can work your way towards the edge. You can do your backyard. You can start in environments that are not very distracting. Now that's one way to build up with a progressive step through an environment. Another way is to understand the fact, understand what your dog finds to be reinforcing. So when your dog finds um, your dog finds the environment to be really reinforcing, then you can utilize the environment as a reward. This is called the pre-map principle. You ask the dog to look at you, you treat him, and then you say, okay, go sniff around. Let him look around for a second. This way he learns that when he looks at you, that's not it. He doesn't get to do anything else. He gets to look at you and he still gets to see the environment. That's a great way to get puppies engaged. Another is to wait till they look at you and reinforce. Now, the biggest thing that I see with a problem in terms of puppy training is the reinforcer is never really that good. Your pay scale has to change based on your environment. So if I'm working in, in here, I could use kibble. When I'm working outside my yard, I could use a higher value. I like rollover dog food. And if I work on a show, and this is my 10th day doing the show, and it's been hot every day, and I want the animals to look like pickle space today, and I'm super happy. Then I've got steak, you know, because I'm getting paid good to do the show, and I think she should get paid good to do the show too. Any other questions about that? Um, hold on. I'm on, hold on, I'm on the wrong page. Technical yeah. difficulties. Technical difficulties. We'll just going to keep checking. I want to introduce our next dog. This is a really cool dog. This is one of our deaf dogs. And uh, and this, this is a beautiful little dog. She was, a lot of times deaf dogs are actually given up as babies. They're euthanized as babies. People don't want them. There's a lot of myths about them that they shouldn't be around children. We were just talking about that today. Um, and I have two deaf dogs. I absolutely adore these dogs. They're beautiful animals. And this dog was given to me by Anne. I hope you're watching today, Anne, because I, I appreciate you bringing me this dog. I love this dog. She's five years old. She was, uh, she was given up for adoption, and she, she is a beautiful, beautiful little soul and an incredibly talented dog. I want to show you some of her amazing tricks. Um, we have brought her to the Robart School. My aunt, Debbie, was deaf, and, um, and I, I, she was one of the reasons that I'm here. She watched my daughter. She's a beautiful lady. She was a teacher at a deaf school. We brought these dogs to the deaf school, and we hope they inspire people to adopt dogs, not to overlook deaf dogs, and to show that there are no limitations. So I'm going to show you this beautiful little soul. Come on over here, lollipop. Well, all right, let's get you started. Woo! I'm tripping on things. We gotta clean up our workspace here before we get lollipop started. Are you ready to get on the roof with that? Are you ready? Excuse me, get back in your place, sweetheart. Come on over here. Oh, listen, it's going to work. Okay, ready? All right, let's show everybody something amazing. You know, you know where we're going, Melissa? Yeah. Lots of hanging out on your ride on lawnmower. We got it all. <laughs> and I love it. 
Um, I want to show you a really cool little trick. Here's the fun thing. These dogs make up tricks as well because um, when I'm training them, they, they offer me things and I go, oh, I like that instead. Um, so this trick is a trick that... Just, is she looking for something She's to looking do? for a spin. Yeah. She, I got, I'm going to talk to you about this, but I have to show you all about personality. So I'm going to stand over here. Mel, if you want to come over here, because what she does, come here and see her. There's no skateboard to ride. Come here. What she does, lollipop, is she rides the scooter and does things on her own. So I'm just going to ignore her for a second and see if she does that. Come here. Sit over on your, no, there she goes. There she goes. It's called. <laughs> 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 and she just like she's like shut up i'm trying to work we're not i, I just want to say something for a second can i just say something for a second come on over here okay can you just we're gonna get back to work in a second all right she she just decides when she wants to work and the funny thing is, is that i let her do it and now it's kind of created not even you in other places now this is an amazing trick you know what i'm going to save this trick for last i want to show you a trick they made up for themselves but we're running out of time here so hang tight and have a look at little lollipop for a second i need to get a new drop do you want you want look at that beautiful thing <laughs> you see young lady all right this is lollipop's new trick something that we were going to do showcase in 2020 Amazing balance, but you got to have control there a little bit. Good job. Nice. Good job. Okay, control. What's the light on the box? We heard I should have squatted again. She's got figured out how to get it moving. We just have to learn how to slow it down. Can you spin on it? All right, good job. Okay, come on over here. Get on your box. Okay, now you hold on there one second. Let's get rid of it. I want to get her to sit there. There she goes. All by herself. <laughs> and not very lollipop dish stuff to do. All right, this is the trick that they, you want to go on this side now so that you can catch. Their faces, that's for sure. Here we go. My favorite trick that they discover themselves. <laughs> Gotta show you that one twice, even though Lollipop didn't get something. We're still working on our entry. Here we go. <laughs> This trick was born when they were fighting over the scooter one day. There we go, sweetheart. All right, last trick for Lollipop. We're going to say goodbye to the cat. Come on, Lollipop. Let's get One more for you. All right, before we do this last trick, I want to thank Angel Rosser for having us on. We're super excited to be here for Pride. I want to dedicate this uh, hour to my uncle, Brad. He's, he's, I love him so much. Uh, he came out of the closet at 50 years of age. And when I think about Pride and how he should have felt proud to be who he was his whole life, and I'm happy that he feels proud to be who he is now. He's an amazing person. I love you, Uncle Brad. You helped me be who I am. You told me that I was special when I was young and I believed it. And that's why I am who I am today. Let me live with you. You're a beautiful person. And I dedicate this to you. I love you. And I want to show you guys this last awesome trick. Thank you to Jennifer for being our interpreter today. And um, awesome, super excited to be part of Pride. This is our favorite trick of the day. Walking the tightrope. <laughs> Ever since I started letting her ride the scooter on her own, she lost her state completely.
soon. Enjoy the rest of Pride.